This is the Fatty Joe Show, coming to you from Casa de Carey, deep in the forests of Nutmegerville. This show is dedicated to exploring pathways to better health from a holistic perspective. In each episode, we will explore such topics as nutrition, mental and emotional health, fitness, and more. I'm Yogi, your host, and I became interested in studying health after conventional health dogma became damaging and led me to become massively overweight. Against modern convention, I went on a keto lifestyle and I lost over 300 pounds and gained a level of control on my personal health that I never had before. Now I'm on a journey to find out what is myth and what is truth in the ever convoluted world of what is considered healthy. Come join me on a journey of discovery as I look for a path to improve total health. If you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash the fatty Joe show or patreon.com slash Carrie Brown. If you want to check out all of our social media links and recipes, head to carriebrown.com. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the show. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the second episode of the Fatty Joe Show. In the series of early influencers, people that inspired me to do a healthy lifestyle. My guest today is Danny Vega. If you don't know Danny Vega, he is a fitness and nutrition guru. He is a podcaster extraordinaire, runs the podcast, The Fat Fueled Family with his wife, Mora. He's also really into total fitness, not just working out, not just hitting the gym and, and eating right, but also mental health, outlook on life, everything that goes into a healthy lifestyle, including financial um, aspects of keeping your finances right so that you can live a healthy lifestyle. Today, we're going to be talking about, with Danny, about getting on track with our fitness as well as our nutrition. He was one of the people that inspired me to get my ass out of the truck and start moving around with my 20-pound attack gerbil. And for those of you who don't know, at one point while I was on the truck, I topped the scales over 600 pounds. At now, at current weigh-in, I'm at 304 pounds, and I'm still continuing my journey to a healthier me with future goals of athletic endeavors such as through hiking the AT, PCT, and the American Discovery Trail. And to do that, I need to be a smaller person. So we're going to talk to Danny because he's one of the guys, like I said, who influenced me to get started. We're going to talk to Danny today about busting the myths and the excuses of why you can't live a healthier lifestyle in a nutrition manner as well as in a fitness manner. So how are you doing today, Danny? Oh, it's so good to see you, man. First of all, it's so good to see that kitchen. I can't tell you the last time I saw that kitchen. Uh, yeah, this is a Carrie Brown production, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, so, man. And, uh, and, and also, I mean, how much, how much did you weigh like back in 17 when, when you were like really active on Keto Vangelist Unlimited and all that other stuff? Um, when, I started, when I started on Keto Vangelist Unlimited, I was probably around 400 pounds. I had already lost some weight there, but I was, I was still near that 500 pound scale. And uh, I think I had lost about a hundred and something pounds. Um, I pulled out some of my shirts upstairs when I packed and moved everything out. And some of the shirts, I'm like, holy crap, because they're <laughs> so baggy on me now. Um, but yeah, it, I, like I said, I haven't been this weight since uh, I lived in the Philippines for about two and a half years. And actually, when I graduated high school, I was over 600 pounds. And I ended up moving to the Philippines for about two and a half years, doing a lot of volunteer work. And when I came back from the Philippines, I was about 290 pounds. And back then at 290 pounds, I almost had a six pack. Yeah, six, six, man. That's, that's a good weight. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, even at 600 pounds, though, I was a fairly athletic 600 pounds. Uh, 
I, I moved around and carried my weight a lot easier than a lot of guys who are shorter and human bowling ball, you know, size of, of working around. And, and we were talking off air and I told you about how when I was a trucker, I would see so many guys that were so heavy, they had to use step ladders to get in and out of their truck because they couldn't lift themselves properly and they, they needed that help. So I have a goal of getting everybody started on a fitness lifestyle, on a healthy lifestyle. And one of the target audiences is people that are in sedentary jobs like I was in truck driving. So when you're getting, you are a personal trainer and you help, you help coach people in, in nutrition as part of your personal training journey. When you're dealing with somebody that is just starting out, let's say they have no fitness background, no nutritional background, they're living off a of little Debbie and, and Mountain Dew. What are the first steps that you usually do to get them going? Well, I gotta say, man, I, I was pretty sheltered when it came to the morbidly obese, Mike, in even going all the way back to my years when I was doing personal training, like for me, obese was like I had 350 pounders, but you know, that's, that's nowadays is so much more common. And uh, one guy who really helped me understand, you know, the what someone goes through when they hit that five, six, 700 pound mark uh, was Sean Mulroney, who's been just really, really helpful. He's, he's lost like almost 200 pounds already. And like, you know, you start getting into these other issues, like you can't, you can't get up, you can't even move around your house, people who haven't left their houses in several years. Um, I will say like from a nutritional standpoint, the first thing you got to do is going to be the hardest one for the, the, the group you're talking about the truckers because, you know, they have to really have a complete change of paradigm. Because, first of all, I have to say, look, I understand there's there's you don't have access to a kitchen, you don't have access to a lot of stuff. And so you're going to need a lot of this fast food, um, at, at least at first while you're trying to work things out. The first thing I would do is get rid of anything in the house. Uh, I don't know how long people are in their houses when they're when they're really working hard, but let's say they, they get like a week at a time at home or, or whatever it is, several days. Get rid of the stuff in the house and then get rid of all the stashes in the car, uh, in, the, in the cab that you got, you know, hiding around somewhere uh, in your truck. Get rid of all of that stuff and then start focusing as much as possible on real food. That being said, I know that some people are like, okay, yeah, it's easy for you to say. I'm going to say the first thing that I'll kind of, um, that I'll uh, con con concede on this is one easy thing to do, man, is these burger patties, man. You go to, you go to McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. Um, I just was talking the other day with some people online about how it gets a little crazy when people are like talking about, you know, grass fed and all this stuff. And, and I love that. And, and if you can do that, when you get a chance to do that, but for now, if you're going to spend, let's say, if you, if you're giving yourself like five to $10 a day to spend on snacks, then you can spend that on burger patties. And, you know, on average, let, let, let's say, let's go high, high range, a dollar 50 per patty. You know, that means for six bucks, you can get a pound of meat that's cooked for you and already in patties. And you got to take your little Redmond sea salt, your Redmond real salt around with you. Hopefully you have that. So you get some good salt in your system. Um, and that's the first step. So you get rid of the, 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 the crap and you're going to have to get rid of the carbs. I mean, that's going to be one of those things where you can either rip the bandaid off, which is what I did, or you can go slow. I can tell you that as someone who, um, who's not a, a good regulator myself, I'm an abstainer it's all about ripping the bandage off. It's better that way because you're just going to prolong your suffering if you're trying to do it in a slow, controlled way. You don't really have, a lot of people don't have the knowledge to do that, like especially if they're trying to say, okay, well, I'm going to go from 500 grams of carbs to 100 grams of carbs. I don't even know what that looks like uh, unless I'm like working with someone, you know, and then I'm telling them what to do. Uh, and, and most of the time when I'm doing that, if I'm working with a client, I'm giving them an Excel spreadsheet that is going to say ounces and, and all those things. And that's a little bit too much for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I can tell you when I was a driver, I did do the 
Carl's Jr. and Wendy's quite a bit to get the burger patties and actually uh, even started telling them to don't put cheese on it because they use that crappy American cheese with the, yeah. with the vegetable oils and all that. And whenever I went into a restaurant, I had my restaurant contraband bag. And in that contraband bag was, you know, my Primal Kitchen ketchup, my my Primal Kitchen mayos and and dressings and uh, Redmond's Grill salt and it, those types of things that I would bring in. And that's what I would use because uh, we had we do have a few diners out there like uh, Petro has um the iron skillet and TA has the country kitchen, but even the diners at a lot of truck stops are going away. So it's, it's primarily fast food, subway, stuff like that, Dunkin' Donuts. So I had my, my contraband bag. And one of my favorite things was to get a couple of nice burger patties and then go get to the salad bar, load up on the salad and then pour the, my own dressing on there, skip the dressing and make sure, you know, I got, that was one of my favorite things. The other favorite thing was breakfast because I love breakfast and it was just yeah. the eggs and the breakfast meats. That's so and, easy to do. And you could do that in a hotel. You know, sometimes it's free if you're staying at a hotel. A lot of times you're not staying in hotels though, right? It depends. Uh, me personally, no, because I was trying to save money, but occasionally I would. Uh, the guys will go home at different rates. There's some guys that are home every night. There's some guys home once a week, a couple times a month. Me, I was out the majority of the year. I went home twice a year, usually for about three days. So I was away from home quite a bit. I did order stuff to have non-perishable wise to have on the truck and would load my truck every time I went home. I, I would order throughout the year and have like this massive care package from Thrive Market or things that I can get on Amazon, bulk seafoods and you know canned seafoods and things that I would keep on. But it is, especially people in my situation, there was a number of truckers that I met that actually didn't have homes because of the fact that they got on their trucking because they were homeless previously. And it was their way of stepping up and having roof over their head. And so there was guys that I met that never went home. They did not have, they might have had a post office box somewhere, but they never had a place to go and lay their head other than the truck. So to get most of these guys fed it was walmart or occasional markets that would allow you to park your truck and go in and not even all walmart most walmarts were pretty cool with us parking and going and shopping but not all walmarts and so it was sometimes at costco sometimes at uh at some of the markets there was a couple of whole foods along the road and then walmart was the key area so you had to learn to be keto walmart what about what about um do you have like um like a an outlet that you could plug into that you could put a like a hot plate and, and it depends it depends they do make they do make a trucker's line of cooking gear companies like road pro make them and you can plug them in 12 volt they're mainly slow cookers they're they don't work that great they're the the best thing they produce is the lunchbox oven and it looks like the old-fashioned stanley lunchbox but it's actually a little slow cooker and you oh, plug man. it into your out you plug it into your 12 foot your cigarette lighter outlet um, if you have an inverter you can plug in things and you could buy a 300 watt inverter that plugs into your your outlet and you can run a full-size slow cooker on low with it so i was fortunate enough to have an inverter so i had the outlets and i even took um i had a built-in fridge and I bought a dorm fridge at Walmart, threw it on the top bunk, cranked the temperature all the way down. So I had an extra freezer. Oof, that's fantastic. So, dude. yeah. That's and so I had the Ninja Foodie. I had uh, the George Foreman grill. So I was pretty decked out. But like I said, I lived in the truck. And there's guys who every time they come back to their truck, they got a different truck. Oh, wow. You know, so they're constantly moving. So they can only take so much with them. Me, I, it was like carrying an apartment because I was in that truck all the time. So um, the one thing I'll, I'll mention that, that we all love, I'm sure, um, I, would, I would, with a caveat, so keto bricks are amazing. Um, yeah. Buying them in bulk is the best way because they're expensive, you know? Um, I think if you buy them in bulk, they come out to $6 each, um, which is one of those things that now you're talking about if you can eat half of one 
uh, that's 500 calories. Now you're getting $3 per, per snack if you're going to do that. Um, but the keto brick is an amazing food to get fat in, but that's not what we're relying on for, for protein because it's, it's right. got like, you know, it's pea protein, which is fine, digested easily and all that, but you're not going to get the leucine that you need if you're trying to maintain muscle, uh, especially while you're on the road and you're trying to lose weight. Muscle's like a key currency, like muscle's really, really important. And that's why protein in general is so important for people losing weight. So like prioritizing protein would be a, a, a huge thing, whether you're, you want to just keep it easy. Let's say you're, let's say you're 300 and you know, your ultimate goal is like in six months, you want to be, you want to, you want to lose 50 pounds, right? You want to get to 250. I would set my protein to 250, you know, and, and, and just the rest of it would just be a calorie equation and just trying to, but if you're eating mostly protein and fat, for the most part, if you're eating these burgers and then you throw in a few of the, the chicken uh, breasts, you know, just to keep the fat a little bit lower, if you're really trying to go fast, just know that chicken breast is just so terrible. I mean, so it, it, it's, it doesn't taste good. You know, it doesn't really have that many yeah. nutrients. I wouldn't focus on it. But like, let's say if I if I was a really big guy, I'd probably be that guy getting like maybe, you know, four patties and then two chicken breasts. And know that the chicken breasts are more expensive too. They're like almost three bucks. So that's, nice. that's something you got to think about. Um, and then other than that, like it all comes down to how often do you get to stand up? You know, because if, you, if you're driving for like a four hour clip and you can, you can stand up and walk around for a few minutes, that's huge. I just don't know. You said there's, there's so much variation. It's true. Like my dad was a trucker in the early 80s. Um, and he would just be, he would, he was the type that he would be gone for like three days, be back for like a day or two and go, go for it again. You know? Yeah. But yeah. That's one of the, the biggest tr- thing, man. One of the tricks I had too, just to get some sort of movement in and is, is I would actually sit in a squat position in the truck. Like I would lift <laughs> myself up off the seat and hold myself there so that my, you know, hit the cruise control. I mean, this is only can do it when you got cruise control, but I would lift myself up and just hold myself there while I was driving just and it wasn't you know like walking or anything but it was a static exercise that's a walk I would have brutal yeah and so I would have uh I'd have the little hand exerciser things um I had one of the forearm exerciser doodads but I ended up breaking that but the biggest thing was is I got my dog which I we refer to as the 20 pound attack gerbil (laughs) <laughs> and uh you know you have a dog on the truck you got to get out and walk so it was great to have a pet to get out and and the pets are key to psychological health you're by yourself a lot on the truck so that company is is great much better than having a student because <laughs> we had students on the truck and those about killed me um <laughs> the liability oh man i'll tell you but uh but yeah, those are some of the things that we did. Uh, there's guys that use resistance bands. I, I'm not a fan of resistance bands because I keep breaking them and punching myself in the face. Uh, <laughs> That's the worst. They're they're not really designed for tall people. Oh so, yeah, man. You know, so so, so you do an overhead press with that thing. It's like I'm oh no, no, I I I I can't like I, I can't get it all the way up. But also. Uh, one of the reasons why I started driving personally is I was in a really bad car accident and I couldn't hardly walk for over a year. That's one of the reasons why I hit that 600 pound mark. And one of the the things that I was able to do uh, after I was able to start getting mobile that I was physically capable of doing for a job was getting into the truck. And it still took a few years before I was physically able enough to do any kind of more than extremely lightweight workout. And it, it killed me for a while, made me depressed because I came from an athletic background. I was surfing, I was um, playing football, I, I did pro wrestling for a while, I did rugby with some friends, pickup games. You know, I was constantly doing athletic stuff. At, even at when I was about, 400 and something pounds and I was doing pro wrestling I could stand in the ring and do a front flip and land on my feet wow (laughs) so it was yeah it I was going off top turnbuckles and doing flips and landing on people and stuff like that so 
it, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't an immobile 400 pounder. I was, I was, I was fairly fit, but I always struggled with this excess fat layer. And, uh, even, even with body until, and I'm still dealing with it with keto, but it's going away now. And, uh, I found for myself doing the higher protein actually made me lose more fat. And so I never really got into tracking. I just eat the meat and yeah. don't eat when you're not hungry. Don't keep snacks on the truck because yep. you keep snacks. That's the temptation. Yep. Stay away from the sodas. Um, so a lot of the excuses that I had, uh, about being injured, about not having a kitchen, not having a gym, you, I had to work through them. So a lot of people do make mis these excuses of why they can't start. And I'm sure you've heard a billion of them, yeah. of, of why they cannot do this or that, get on a healthy nutritional plan, a healthy fitness plan. What are some of the excuses have you heard and how did you debunk them? Well, one of the, the ones that I get the most is like, you know, oh, I messed up, you know, I'll just get back on it tomorrow. Or, um, you know, I just, I'm sick of myself. I'm sick of how I feel. You know, I'm going to start a new diet on Monday and it's Thursday or Friday. And it's yeah. like the time to start. Once I hear someone tell me that they're, they're willing to make the change and they're willing to make the decision, the time to start is now, you know, the time to start is now. Like if, if you have, um, you don't have your plan yet, then I'm going to tell you, look, for now, just cut out all the garbage in your house and just eat all the meat you want for the next couple of weeks and, and then just wait for further instruction. You know, that, that's one that I hear all the time. Um, people always make excuses, whether it's like, oh, I'm going to be traveling. Like traveling is one that, that I get all the time. And, and with that, it's super simple. Like all you have to do is plan. All you have to do is plan. If, yeah. if you say, I'm going to be on a vacation for three days, you know where you're going to be. Search for the local restaurants so that you can know where you're going to go. Find the meals that you're going to do. I have to do this with my kids because, like, I don't want to have an argument in the middle of the restaurant. I'm going to, like, on the road to the restaurant, Mauro and I are going to be like, all right, we're going to this place. Do you want this or this? Or, or maybe three options, and they're all options that we love, you know? We don't order off the kids' menu because they don't got anything for my kids, so it costs more, but it doesn't matter. These kids eat, like monsters um and so that that's that's another one that people start to make excuses about traveling and stuff when i'm working with the client like i only check in once a week but like if i see that they haven't updated their their weigh-ins like for several days or they their way they're, they're updating them and they're going backwards then that's when i check in on them because a lot of the time people they need that extra you know um accountability um, and, and if you're not working with a coach, then at the very least, find someone who is probably it's a good idea to find someone who's in your same position, as long as you understand that you two aren't going to be co-signing co each other's BS, you know, like, like, yeah, yeah, it's been a crazy week. Yeah, me too, man. It's crazy. Let, you know, that's, that's not any good. Or a friend who, who, you know, cares about you, who's one going to give you the truth. Um, and two, not going to be a jerk about it, you know? Cause that's, right. that's, I know that's important. Cause like sometimes the message is great, but the delivery is terrible and that, that ruins the whole message, you know? Well, you know, sometimes you got to give a crap sandwich. Yeah, the thing, the, they don't so, call it the pretty truth. They, they don't yeah. call it the gorgeous so, truth. They call it the ugly truth. You're right. So, you know, I, but uh, yeah, it's planning was a big one for me on the truck. I generally knew what restaurants I had available in most areas, especially as I crossed the country, like my 40th time, I knew what was up ahead, what was behind me. So I knew what was available. My biggest thing was planning for inside the truck. And some of the tricks that I had, one, I, I did order a lot of keto chow, which is a, a meal replacement oh, shake. Yeah. And the, the company, uh, Chris Bear, that does the keto chow, he is really – focused on putting higher quality uh supplements in the in the he does methylated b vitamins yep. so it was a great lightweight easily packed shelf stable and then if i wanted emergency stuff i bought freeze-dried butter powder freeze-dried heavy cream and freeze-dried um coconut milk 
And that way I had these freeze dried fats in an emergency if I needed them. Cause I, I, I got stuck a few times where there was nothing nearby me and weather prevented me from moving at rest areas and things. So I kept an emergency kit underneath my bunk, but I wanted to keep that emergency kit as healthy as possible. One of the other things I found was a, a actually through one of your guys' podcasts, I first heard about this person, but Jesse, who makes next mile, next mile meals, the freeze drive. Yeah, that's that's what you food. said through hiking. I was like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, so uh, those were were golden to have on the truck, as well as other freeze dried. Where I, I just bought the freeze dried meat, just the freeze dried vegetables, and then I was able to put together soups and stews just from that, because refrigerator space is limited. When I first got on the truck, the first weight loss program I started was trying to go vegan and vegetarian, and I could not keep with with it. I would buy fresh veggies, and I couldn't get through all of them. And I'd be hungry all the damn time and just miserable. And you're already by yourself and just being miserable, not fun. Yeah. So man. let but, me say something about the uh, about the the other thing with movement and stuff because you know our friend um, Nurse Cindy, she's she's amazing. She's really smart, and she does something with her older patients and people who follow her called Pop Squat, which is basically like when you go to sit down on the toilet, you know maybe find something to hold yourself with the first couple of times you do it and just squat into a, you know, get into a squat on the toilet. I would say the equivalent of that for like a trucker would be to do step ups onto your, like into the cab. Cause that's a nice mm -hmm. big incline, you know, just yeah. getting up with one leg, you know, and standing up, coming back down, getting up with the other leg. Cause chances are, if you're doing that repetitively, you're going to favor one leg over the other. You're just going to automatically do the one that's easier. Um, and that could cause problems, especially if you're going to go sit down after and you're going to have these left, right imbalances, which left, right imbalances are, are worse than front back imbalances, because then you start to get overcompensation. So you got one knee that's messed up. Then you find that your the, the opposite hip starts to get messed up and then the opposite lower back from that hip gets messed up. And then all of a sudden the opposite shoulder from that lower back starts to get messed up because all these muscles are just compensating and not really doing their jobs because the one, someone else is failing and they're just, our bodies are gonna find ways to move. So um, that would be another important thing. But like, honestly, more important than like your program is just working movement in, you know, like working movement. Like our ancestors, the crazy thing is that they used to burn right around the same amount of calories that we do now. And the only reason that's different that, that we can even compare is that we consume so much information and media that our brains need energy to process them, but it's not giving you a metabolic benefit at all. So right. those calories that you're burning really aren't like helping you. They're not helping you improve your health or lower the risk of disease. So finding ways to, whether it's like, if you're that person who gets on the road at 4 a.m., you're going to have to try to get up a little bit early and just do like a 20 minute walk before you get on the tr in the truck and then finding at the end of the day it's so important especially if you're a, a driver that has insulin resistance and and an easy easy way to tell that it's very simple is like you carry a lot of fat in your gut you have low energy levels if you have that then the best thing you could do is at the very end of the day when you find a place to park hitting the road just for 20 minutes, just walking for 20 minutes. You know, if that means that you got to walk for two minutes, catch your breath, stand for a little bit, walk for another two minutes until that 20 minutes is over, then that's fine. But like eventually, hopefully you'll be able to walk for the full 20 minutes. And what that does is because I had a client who I had to already lost like 40 pounds with me last year. And it, would, it had been like several months and, and the calories were getting lower. I didn't want to change his calories up. So what I did was I had him test his blood sugar and ketones in the morning. And sure enough, like he was still waking up with elevated blood sugar, which tells me that there's some insulin issues there. So if you were to just like what I did with him was I, I recommended 500 milligrams of berberine, which is two meals a day. So just taking that before the meals because that helps lower blood sugar. And then a, a short walk after dinner. And then after three days of doing that, his blood sugar went from on average like 99 to 102. 
it started like averaging between like 88 and 90. And sure enough, the next three weeks, he, he, he averaged like 2.7 pounds a week loss. So things like that are just things that you can do and just know that like, what is this going to do? This walk at the end of the day, it's not going to do anything. I need sleep. Well, if you actually do that, you lower your blood sugar and you burn more fat while you sleep. Because most of the fat we're burning is just breath. We're breathing it out. So if our bodies are in a better environment to burn fat, we're going to burn more fat without having to worry about eating less calories. Like this is a long thing, especially if you got over 100 pounds to lose. You can't get there quick. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. And if you try to do it too quick, you're going to end up going the wrong way. You're going to end up eventually your body's going to give out, your brain's going to give out, and you're going to have like a massive binge session. You're going to feel ter about your, terrible about yourself, and you're going to try to undo what you did. So better to just do those little things just every single day, making them part of your habits. And then like the whole principle of, of anything that we do is just uh, progressive overload. You know, over time, make it a little bit harder, just a little bit, you know, just make it a little bit harder, walk a little bit longer. If you got a time, time to lift, start to do some lifting, but knowing that maybe you don't have that opportunity for a long time, the, the diet is going to be what you rely on the most, along with making sure that you're sleeping well, not be taking too much of these stimulants um, so that you're able to sleep at night. So one of these things that, that a lot of people will notice is that once they start eating better, they will need less stimulants. They will need less of this stuff. Because I know a lot of them are going to be like, well, I'm driving 15 hours today. Like, I'm going to need something. And I get that. But like, as long as you are able to cut that caffeine or whatever it is off, because some people are on Adderall, some people are on Ritalin, some of them are on prescription, some of them are not prescription. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, yeah. You got to you gotta be aware of those things um, because even if you are at a point where you already have like a big, um, uh, it, it becomes so, something that you probably don't feel it anymore. And it's just like you have a, a dependence and you have like a... Um, I'm forgetting what, what that's called, like a tolerance built up, mm -hmm. your brain is still affected the same way. So like you may not feel that that buzz from whatever it is you're taking anymore, but your brain still feels it and you're not going to sleep well and then you're not going to be performing well. Well, you know, coffee and energy drinks are kind of lifeblood in the truckers industry. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 a hard one for a lot of truckers to give up, especially since you don't have consistent sleeping patterns in the first place. Yeah. You don't actually really choose a lot of times, depending on what you do for work, you don't really choose a lot of time when you drive and when you sleep because the schedule can be all over the place. I could be driving in the morning one day and then driving through the night the next day. And it was, you know, and we know that not having a, a standard sleeping pattern can affect the circadian rhythm, can have massive health effects in a negative way on the body. So you do quite a bit of traveling yourself. You, you do a lot of conventions. You go out to some different areas. Do you take any kind of fitness gear with you for travel, for, for working out when you're on the road or in a, in a hotel or anything like that? Do you, do you take anything with you? Yeah, so like that's a great point, man. I, I actually missed those days because I had like in January, February, I had already done several trips and then, you know, three, four speaking engagements lost in the last several months. You know, that's money too that I get that I lost. But yeah, um, I, one of the things that I the only thing I really took was my it all depended. Like if I if I knew that, for instance, when I was still powerlifting, I would take my belt and everything. I would take all types of stuff mm -hmm. in my luggage. Uh, but nowadays, it's really just my resistance bands. Um, I'll take those. And then um, a lot of the times these hotels are going to have uh, dumbbells and things like that. I love body weight stuff, especially like if I'm lifting all the time, I don't mind that, you know, I can just do some body weight stuff. I can if, if I have a hotel that has like 10 floors, I'm going to be going up and down those stairs. I love that. I can either do it sprinting or walking. Um, nowadays I find that like everything that I do is a little bit more toned down. Like I'm not, if I'm going up the stairs, I'm just going to walk up and down stairs. Uh, sometimes I'll go for walks. I barely go for runs anymore. Um, but I'll use the dumbbells. I'll, I'll do my favorite thing to do is burpees. I know a lot of people can't do burpees, but, um, that's something that I love to do. 
Um, I love pull-ups. If I have a pull-up bar, if I got burpees, that alone is going to be enough for me. But honestly, like uh, it's, it all depends on how long I'm gone. Like if I'm gone for five days, that makes it harder. Cause then I'm like, damn, I'm, that means I'm going to have like three days of like these type of workouts. Um, and if I, if that were me now, I'd be kind of, kind of upset about it because I had to do like a month and a half of these type of workouts. I got so sick of them. Um, but I mean, I guess it, I guess it made me more appreciative of like the little things, you know, like just being, being home and being stuck with this equipment that I have at home, which I, I got a decent setup. It was nice to get back in the gym, but you don't need much, man. It's just a matter of like, get it in. Like if you're, if you're at home and you're at your best, you can go to that gym, you can put your headphones on and all that fun stuff and all those creature comforts. But if you're on the road, just get it in, you know, get something in, you know, maybe if you can set apart 30 minutes to do something, whether that's push-ups onto a, a park bench or push-ups on the floor, or um, even what I like to do, urban runs. They used to be urban runs, now they're urban walks, <laughs> which is like, okay, if I'm walking, if I'm somewhere, I'll walk around and I'll give myself some rules. Like if I see, every time I see a fire hydrant, I'm gonna do five uh, burpees. Every time I see a stoplight, I'm gonna do squats. Every time I see a stop sign, I'm gonna do push-ups. Those simple things or Two other things that I love to use on the road is if, if, I, if I prepare ahead of time or if I'm going with my kids, we do this one with the kids a lot. You can take um, a pair of dice and or a, uh, a deck of cards. And like with the dice, it's something as simple as like you throw, you throw them down the first dice. You got six pre-planned exercises that you'll say, okay, so number one is squats, let's say, and it lands on a one. Then the second number is like, you multiply that by three to get the reps. So like, if you have, you know, if, if you roll a six, you got to do squats for 18 reps, you know, cause that's three times six. Um, and, and, you, and then you can just keep doing that as long as you have time. Or if it's the, the deck of cards, that one's simple too. Like you do um, face cards or squats, you know, and then, or, or you say you, you do uh, by the suits, you know, the hearts of squats, diamonds or push-ups and then whatever the whatever the card is that's the reps if it's a face card it's 10 and you can work through the whole deck of cards or work through as many cards as you can in the time that you've set apart for yourself now as we talked about before obesity is rampant in the in the trucking industry as well as in the country and it's it's scaled up in the trucking industry uh and we uh, understanding nutrition understand that insulin isn't exactly, or uh, not insulin, but uh, obesity isn't exactly caused by um, lack of working out, but it's um, a big factor is the hormonal factor of it. And can you tell us a little bit about getting active and how that affects your hormones and helps get you leaner? Oh, that's so huge, man, because like, you know, people talk about the importance of fasting. That's a big one. They talk about the importance of like, you know, having lower insulin and there's so many different ways to do it like if you exercise that's like mimicking fasting you know so get exercising mim mimics fasting um the lowering the carbs a lot of the people you talk about hormones the issues that people are going to have hormonally that are obese beyond possibly like high estrogen and lower testosterone because that's a big one because when your your fat cells increase that's just more room for estrogen to live. And, and then as you lower your weight, that estrogen will start to be released. So you start to see some hormonal changes there, whether it's like you're breaking out or things like that. It's just the estrogen being released. But when it comes to hormones, insulin is going to be the one that you really want to focus on the most when you're losing weight, because as much as calories matter, hormones matter a ton when it comes to this stuff. And putting yourself in the right environment is so important because so many people think like, well, it's a calorie equation. So you're only looking at one factor in all of the factors that you got to like, you know, work on. And if you're starving yourself, it's going to get to a point where once you've banged that nail so many times, you're not going to have much else that you can do if you don't have the knowledge of like what I just talked about, for example, lowering insulin by walking at night you know, um, and all those things. So um, 
a lot of people need to do a little bit of work to understand what lowers insulin. And the simple thing to do is get rid of the carbs. You know, getting rid of the carbs makes it so easy. Plus, you also, uh, you're going to make it easier for yourself because you're not going to have these blood sugar swings where you're going to be like hangry when you're, when you're actually hungry. Um, and so, you know, that cuts out most of the problems. You, once you learn that bread is a carb, pasta is a carb, you know, um, all of these other foods, like you just make little changes, man. Nowadays, it's so easy because so many places allow you to order the food. They even have like menus, low carb menus where you can like, you know, already choose from a pre-selected group of things. Unfortunately, if it's an actual low carb menu, most of them are going to be low carb, low fat. So it's terrible. Um, it's just not going to fill you up. But like, I like what you mentioned with the salads, because some people are still going to be used to that, that volume driving satiety. You know, they think they look at this plate of, of, of things and, or if it's just meat and it's just so much smaller than it used to be. Um, so if you have to put it over a bed of salad, go for it. It's going to help you with that. But just know that over time, your hormones are going to get to a point where your, your ghrelin is going to decrease, which ghrelin is the main hunger hormone. Um, and so what happens over time, if you do it slow and you don't do it fast, is that your hormones will adjust with you. Um, and you have to build in over time. Like, for example, someone who's doing this for a long period of time, I have in, in my coaching, I, I'll say like, we'll be in a deficit for 11 days, and then we'll be in a surplus for three days. And that, that helps you with the increases in ghrelin and the, the decreases in your metabolism that happen over time. Because if you're on a low calorie diet for a long period of time, one of the ways that your body tries to fight you is it'll say, I don't like this losing weight thing. Your body always fights for homeostasis. So it's like, I'm gonna make this person really, really hungry or, um, or I'm gonna slow down my metabolism so I can do more with less, which is like, if you're not noticing that, you're lowering your calories and then you're like, all of a sudden you're like, you're, you're, you're 300 pounds and you're at 1500 calories and you're just like, how much lower can I go? You know, like it, it can't go much lower. So that, that, that's what I would say. Like, I don't think the person needs to be like a, a, a master of, of hormones and, and all that, but just knowing that the main one that, that need, they need to look at is insulin. And the best ways to lower insulin is if you could do intermittent fasting, that's a great one. Walking, working out, that's going to help you clear glucose. The more you can clear glucose out of your system by activity, the less insulin you have to shoot out to lower that glucose. One thing I found, and I'm not as big of an expert as you are, but one thing I found is the more sedentary you are, the more toxic carbohydrates become. And you know, being in the field that I was in, you're sedentary for hours on a, at a time. Even sometimes you would go to uh, certain places where you would go to pick up a load and let's say it was a chicken farm and you're picking up eggs or chicken, they wouldn't allow you out of your truck. And sometimes you'd be sitting there for eight, nine hours waiting for a pickup and they're not allowing you out of the truck because they're afraid one little germ is going to kill all their chickens. And you, yeah, you'd see these guys coming out with hazmat suits. After picking up at chicken places, I, I didn't eat chicken for a while. So, <laughs> man. Oh, man. So, yeah. um, but you know, one of the things you were talking about ghrelin and, and the hunger response and, uh, and leptin is, is the uh, satiety response. One of the other things that can factor in there is not just macronutrients, but micronutrients which can be challenging to get when you're on the road like I was because you're not really having access to the most nutrient-dense foods out there. So a lot of people actually rely on supplements. But as we know, that's a minefield in itself because of how bad some of these supplements can actually be. So could you tell us a little bit about how to find a quality supplement, what to look for? If a person's going to need to say, let's take a multivitamin mineral because they're not getting the nutrition they, they need to get because they're stuck with fast food a lot. They can't haul as much. Maybe they don't have a refrigerator like I did. You know, so how, how could they get in some of more of those micronutrients as well? 
Well, one of the things that I love, and it's also important for brain health, is uh, DHA. So uh, a good fish oil supplement, and there's not many, um, like I would not recommend going to, you know, Walgreens or, you know, CVS or Costco. Um, I, I, my, my couple of companies that I love, one of them is Nordic Naturals. I love Nordic Naturals. It's lab tested. What, what, what is really ironic is that a lot of people are taking fish oil supplements to lower inflammation because omega threes are fantastic for that. The problem yeah. is that uh, fish oil is is a, a big majority is, is polyunsaturated, and and so um, what happens is when you have all these double bonds to oxygen, the 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 pills can actually oxidize, and now you're taking pills that are oxidized and you're increasing your oxidative stress just from taking a pill that you were doing for the opposite. So um, Nordic Naturals is awesome. You can also do uh, Carlson's brand. Um, they're, uh, they're actually oils. So you can, that one you, you keep in your fridge. If you have a fridge, if you don't, then I would just, as long as your cab is like, you know, pretty good temperature controlled, um, <laughs> that's, that's another whole other issue that you got to look at. Yeah. Uh, but got up to 110 like, degrees in my truck sometimes. Oh my goodness, man. That's crazy. Got it inside the truck, huh? Inside the truck with the AC on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's Arizona, that's my friend, Arizona, my friend. <laughs> well, if it's, if it's a fat, if it's an oil, like a fish oil, then, then I wouldn't keep them in the truck that I would just yeah. keep like what you're taking with you for that day. Like, or those that week. You know, put it in a, a little Ziploc or something and, and find a way to kind of keep it cool. Uh, B vitamins are super important. So you mentioned um, the keto chow has methylated Bs. If you don't have keto chow, if you want to take a, a, a supplement, we just have on auto ship um, Ali Miller's um, Calm and Clear, which has uh, methylated Bs in it. You can also take um, the Thorn brand has methylated Bs that, that we really trust the Thorn brand. So, Carrie takes those. Yeah, yeah, I know Carrie loves those, and she actually even like when Maura started taking them, started telling her like you know what to do, where you, you basically increase that that dosage until you start to feel bad, and then like lower the dosage because some people need a lot more. As far as other micronutrients to take, I think the most important ones are going to be like uh, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. Sodium is easy because you could just heavily salt your food. Potassium is one of those where um, I get bulk supplements, um, powdered potassium citrate, and I just add a little bit to my coffee every morning. So you can do that. You can even like just take the little, I have a one eighth teaspoon uh, is 200 milligrams of potassium, which is perfect. It's perfect what I need. Or the magnesium. I love this. I'm about to make a post on it. It's called Mag Team. It's uh, Dr. James DiMichelantonio's new supplement. It's got uh, magnesium three and eight. Um, which I'm just doing the stuff on it now. It's amazing for the brain. Like um, his, his supplement is actually, it's, it's, it's all about uh, memory, focus, cognition, and overall brain health. So you think, oh, this is just a, 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 an electrolyte pill, but it's not. It's, it's got, obviously, it's got the, the magnesium in it, but then it also has vitamin C and vitamin D3, um, which are super important and just love this formulation. But um, I guess I don't really take a multivitamin. If I, the closest thing I have to a multivitamin is this uh, optimal carnivore grass-fed organ complex, which is Those like, are excellent. Yeah, and, and the same thing with, uh, what's the other one? The um, uh, Primal, or not primal. Um, ancestral, uh, ancestral. Something. Ancestral, yeah. This is and the those same are actually, source. Those are actually pretty available at a lot of sprouts and uh, – and at some of the natural markets that you can get either get a delivery to or park your truck near. So, yeah. And, and like, it doesn't, the funny things, it, it doesn't give you like the amount of vitamins in it. It tells you what's in it. So it tells you like this one is liver, brain, thymus. Thymus is really important for T cell production for your immunity. Uh, liver is going to have, you know, just a ton of everything, vitamin A, iron, all the really important and huge amounts spleen, intestines, kidney, lung, heart, pancreas. It's got all of that stuff in it. And I just take this six a day. Um, of course, you could also be like me. And um, you could even make liver jerky, man. Like I haven't done it yet, but um, like we have a dehydrator. That would be a good one that if you just say, 
even if you don't like liver, like if you eat a piece of liver jerky, a little bit a day, like half an ounce every day is, that would be awesome. Half an ounce is nothing. Well, we, uh, I, I, one of the reasons to get more nutrition, because I was, I was focused a lot on my micronutrition as well as my macros. So I developed a recipe that I actually made on the truck of a bacon and liver pate. And Ooh. it was awesome. And then we just recently did for the blog, we did what we call the super mother cluckers burger patties. And it's a, it's a, uh, it's a chicken burger with chicken livers in it and collagen to help up that, that nutrient count. We also did the power perky, porky dry chili burgers, which is a chili seasoned pork burger with beef liver in it. Dude, I've done, I've, I haven't done a pork burger with liver in it, but I do my organ meat burgers all the time. And then I do the yeah. chicken ones with chicken organs like it's i just put all of them i put um just all the giblets just grind them all up into the mix. Mm -hmm. yeah one of the other things i did on the truck for uh for the fish oil is part of the canned seafood that i bought online to carry with me on the truck is i, I bought canned cod livers oh those are amazing they taste yes. so much and better than cod liver oil too yes yes and that's good cod liver oil is like oof. And, and I would drink the oil out of it, and then I would usually mash the cod livers up with my seafood salad, and I'd throw, you know, salmon and, and whatever, kippers sometimes. It just, you know, what, whatever I had went into the pool and yeah. make homemade mayos with a, with a uh, stick blender or use some, some good mayos like Primal Kitchen or um, I think Sir Kensington now has an avocado mayo. Yep. And uh, chosen foods a little iffy. You got to really read the ingredient list on that one. Also, it doesn't taste great. It doesn't taste. Good no, either. it doesn't. Um, I, I liked making my own a lot, and, and uh, I'd made hollandaise sauce kind of on the truck with a stick blender, and it was actually more like a butter mayo. And sometimes I would use that on there too, so it was really good. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I, I dude, I I broke it down in the in the truck when it came to food. Like, <laughs> That's yeah. Amazing. So, um, I, I don't know if you ever saw some of the food, food stuff I would put out, but I would Man, make, like, I, I remember in the groups I would, but I, I don't remember anything specifically right now. But that's, yeah. That's like crazy. I would, I would do like Filipino style adobos with the, you know, the, the chicken wow. or the pork or like, and that was, it was all slow cooker stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, w that was one of the things though, that I know I struggled with when I was on the truck is making sure I got the micronutrition in. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons that was important to me, and I want to check out that magnesium supplement, and uh, James, uh, I can no ever pronounce his last name, but he's the one that wrote The Salt Fix. Am I correct? The book yep. The Salt Fix. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's a great book. Yeah, I, I recommend that as, as required reading for anybody starting keto. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because people still have a phobia of, of salt. And, uh or if they do use salt, they go to uh, Norton's, Norton's uh, oh, yeah, table salt or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not really all that great for you. Yeah. But uh, anyway, though, you, uh, you work with people regularly. And I know you've actually had to come back from some injuries yourself uh, to get healthy. And so when you're coming back from an injury, it could be like starting over. And with, yeah, and I'm doing the same thing right now because I, I, you know, I'm nowhere near what I used to be able to lift. I was, I was a power lifter too. And I, I, because of being down for like three years, I'm basically stuck in a position of, of starting over. I feel like I'm starting to work out for the first time in my life. So a lot of truckers are in this situation. And a lot of people in general are because instead of working out, they're turning into Netflix or something like that. So when you're working with people to get them started, to, to jumpstart them, one of the things you got to hit on is mindset. What do you do to get a person to change their perception on working out and change, change their patterns in their life to get going and change their mindset toward it? And the, the most important thing, it, it all starts with gratitude. You know, it all starts with gratitude. Like, and I know it sounds like a cliche, but think about it this way. Like, when you're doing something, especially in the situation that you're talking about, like you're coming back from an injury, you know, you, you've been out of it for a while um, and you're, it's going to suck. It's going to really suck at first, you know, 
and um, you're not even aware of all the negative thoughts that are going in your head. You know, some people are because they're like, why don't I go? Like, why do I keep on saying that I'm going to go at 6 a.m. and all of a sudden it's 7 o'clock and I don't have time to go anymore? It's like all these thoughts that people aren't aware of. And so like starting from a place of gratitude just means that you're, you got to be grateful for the opportunity to train today, you know, like another day on earth, another day to get better. Um, and so it starts with gratitude. And then the other thing is like, if you are really committed to doing something like you really have to focus on that while you're doing it, because if you're going to the gym, think of it this way, especially if you're in a hurry um, to get results, not, not to be in the gym, but like if you're in a hurry to get some results, think about how much time you're going to waste if you're not fully locked in during your workout because you're looking at Instagram between sets, you're, you know, you're, you're doing all this other stuff, you're socializing, you're looking at social media, that's a big one. So knowing that when it's time to flip that switch, you have to flip the switch. So if it's in the gym or even if it's in, if it's outside, like if you're going to be outside for a walk and you want to listen to an audiobook, off. Um, if you're going to find yourself like stopping because you're, you're, you're getting, you know, you're commenting on stuff and all of a sudden you're stopped. That's, that's the worst thing you can do. Um, mindset for me, like has been so huge. We've, how many episodes have we done on mindset, man? It's, it's so important. I know it's a popular topic. You, I listen to your podcast a lot, which is why I had to ask this question. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like what's really important to, um, to get on this like mindset train and to keep the momentum is setting a little bit of time apart for actual personal development every day. Like if it's like, if it's reading, um, you, you read 10 pages of a book a day. If it's listening, you focus on, I mean, shoot, if you're in the truck all the time, you, you freaking got that one locked down. Like you can finish books. Like you can finish a book a day. You know, a lot of books are like six to eight hours, you know, audible is my friend. <laughs> yeah so I used to. that's really good because it, it like it's the same thing like i'm a sales guy so like i you know i spent over a decade doing sales and you know people would look at these conferences like these sales conferences and be like oh here we go again it's gonna be like rah 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 drink the kool-aid and um why are the why are these things always like that it's because they know that people when left to their own devices are like are gonna backslide they're not gonna do the habits that they that that they, it, it's very rare that someone's like on all the time and these 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 um conventions and these sales trainings part of that is beyond just telling us what we need to do this quarter and and all that stuff is like checking back in with the team and doing that stuff and how do we do that we could do that personally by like listening to podcasts or listening to audiobooks like you know one that i recommend really uh a lot is is um can't hurt me by david goggins you know i've listened to that one twice already like i listened to it right when it came out at the end of 2018 and then i just listened to it again because i was doing a 50,000 meter row for charity and i was like getting my mind right i would even listen to it while i was doing the rowing um and it's just those things like imagine you're you've been on a rower for like four hours already and you know you're hearing about david goggins like ripping his hands off and trying to break the pull-up rec record and uh taping his legs up and his, his shoes up because he had like hairline fractures throughout up and down his legs and he literally had to like tape up his shoes like and tape his made it like into like a boot you know just to get through buds or just to get through that that um you know long race that he was doing you know, those things is like, it, it really helps you understand what the mind is capable of. And Goggins always talks about how most of us quit at 40%. That means we got another 60%. And most of it is in your mind. Like, if you strengthen your mind to a certain point, like it gets to a point where it's dangerous, because you could like kill yourself. If you have that, that strong of a mind, then you you lose a lot of the governors on your physical on your muscles, on everything. Obviously that can get dangerous, but most of the people will never get there. I probably won't even ever get there. Um, but it's just those things. Those are the things that, that for me have always been like, oh, man, I really needed that. That, that was really some, some of it was hard. Some of it's going to challenge you, but you kind of got to get that every day. Like we never grow when we're comfortable. We only grow when we're uncomfortable, you know? 
Yeah, you you gotta you. I was listening to somebody today and they said the only way you make improvements is by being uncomfortable and working through yeah. being being uncomfortable. Yep. So we have a Patreon group and it's uh, we actually have a couple of them and one is for Carrie Brown uh, and Yogi Parker Kitchen and the stuff that we do and the other one's for the Fatty Joe Show. Our Patreons get a privilege uh, because they support all the free content that we put out there, they make all this stuff possible. They, they get a privilege of being able to know who our guests are before the guests come on and to ask a question. And I do have a question for, for you from Mark Rhodes. Oh, I know Mark. Yeah, yeah, he's one of our fa Patreon members. And says, he asks, uh, often you cycle carbs, muscle intelligence, and other times you don't count carbs eating carnivore how often would you say you are strictly car um, keto and for how long of a time? How often are you carnivore? Example, you'll do keto diet for three weeks, transition into carnivore for five days, and then back to keto for three more weeks. And then he said, otherwise, great to see you up and about. <laughs> Mark's great, man. Mark's got like some, yeah. he's very data driven. He's got a bunch of cool stuff that he shares. Um, he's an engineer. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's very, he's got the engineer brain. Um, for me, like right now, I haven't been strict carnivore since like late March, late mm -hmm. March. I was doing the carnivore keto cut um, and then the, the whole lockdown thing happened. You know, we spoke, you, I told you I lost my mind. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and um, but like I, everything that I do is planned. I'm not gonna be strict carnivore completely again until September 1st. Um, and that's the last month of this cut that I'm doing for, I got to get like basically photo shoot ready for a trip that we're doing in October. So like right now I have three to four keto days, um, two like vertical diet types days where like basically my carbs are high on those days. Like my carbs are like, well, high for us, not high for like, when I talk to my friends who are not low carb, they're like, that's a low carb day for me. Uh, but it's like 200 grams of carbs on Wednesdays and Fridays. And um, I actually, it, it has everything to do with training. So like Wednesday and Friday, I'm training twice a day. Uh, I do like a, a, a shorter leg session in the morning, a shorter upper body session in the afternoon. And then I, I'm able to get really good pumps in the gym, but I lower my fat. So like if I'm eating, let's say if I'm eating 2,600 calories right now, uh, because I'm dieting, um, I won't like, I won't just add carbs on top of what I'm eating. I'll make my calories be the same. So if I'm eating 160 grams of uh, fat on a re regular day right now, that drops to like 95 grams of fat on a higher carb day. Because that's the most important thing is like, you don't wanna have your carbs and your fat high. Um, so, so right now, most of the time is like I'm eating, like today's a, today's a keto day, but my carbs end up at, I think 40 total today is um, 39, 39 grams of carbs with 11 uh, grams of fiber. Uh, but my, my protein is a little bit lower today. It's just because I'm using these meals that I'm getting. Um, and so like my protein ended up at 177 and my fat ended up at 170. But on a good day, I'll be like at like a typical keto day, this is on average, like from my last several weeks is like 215 to 220, which is right around the weight that I want to end up at. I'm already at 223. So I'm probably going to see if I get a little bit like maybe 215. Uh, my carbs are usually like a 33. And my fat is usually right around 170 on my keto day. Um, then on those those other days, like I said, and then on the weekend, like yesterday was basically almost strict carnivore like I had um no actually yesterday's not a good example because I had chicken fajitas with like peppers and onions and then I had half a keto brick but the day before I had ribeye and eggs and I just like on the weekends I tend to fast longer sometimes I'll do just one meal or I'll do like two meals in a short period of time but that's that's pretty much uh yeah that's pretty much it like everything is uh planned right now it, I've noticed in the last three summers that the summer is usually the time where I, I don't do that well with strict carnivore personally. So I add in at least keto or sometimes high carb days. Awesome. Now, the next part is I have a, a bank of questions that I pull from and we do a quick rapid fire short answer 
uh, type things. And this is mainly to help people out with some quick information. So my first question is, what are the top three foods that you would recommend everybody to avoid? Oh, that's easy. Okay. First one is processed vegetable oils for sure. You know, um, you know, these seed oils, like look for canola, look for anything that's not like butter or tallow or, or, or um, it's pretty easy. It's unfortunately in 60% of the foods we eat. And the cool thing about it is that you get rid of most packaged foods when you get rid of the, the vegetable oils because they're in there. They might be sneaking into your, your drinks too. So you got to look at like if you're drinking a, like one of those cheap shakes that you get at Walmart or something, they'll be in that. Um, second is processed sugars. So like anything that adds sugar, if you're eating like some fruit, I mean, you got to be careful with that. If you're like really overweight, if that's going to be driving cravings, but, but processed sugars, um, and then lastly, food dyes, those, those are really terrible, especially for kids. It, it ends up just being to eat real food. I mean, if you get rid of those three things, you're on your way. All right. So we know that, um, stress is killer in the diet. So what is one of your favorite stress release act, relief yeah. activities? Yeah, for me, it's in the morning. I do when I do my guided prayer and guided meditation every single morning. I use the church home app for guided prayer. That's uh, it's free. It's about six minutes. And then I use the calm app for guided meditation. That's another 10 minutes every single day. And I'm telling you, like, it takes a while, but maybe within like three months or so, you'll start to like everyone around you will start to notice you'll start to notice that you're less irritable you you're just more mindful it just it brings you into mindfulness which mindfulness just means that you're paying attention so like when when something triggers you you're you're able to say oh, that really pissed me off let me let me give, give myself a second to breathe before i respond you know what are your top three excuses that you heard people say <laughs> that they cannot get started on a healthy lifestyle uh, top three money is always one. Someone's always going to be, a, I want to do keto, but I can't afford it. That's a big one. Um, the second one would be, um, I just can't, I, I need, I need my, my, my bread or I need my, this, or I need my, that you don't need anything. You don't need that thing. That's one that I always hear. Like, I just can't get rid of that. Um, you, I'd be like, you know, examine that a little bit because you can, um, the last one I would say trying to think one that I the last I guess this one's not an excuse but I hear this one a lot it ends up being a question you know what what can I do to undo what I just did last night that's a big one and it's like it's not an excuse but it's always like people people think that when they when they mess up that it's this like big mistake you know it's like this big thing but if you really think about it you when you said to yourself that you were going to play it by ear tonight, you already admitted to yourself that you opened that door for yourself. You know, well, we, often find, we often find too, that one mistake is an excuse to keep making mistakes. Yep. So true. So, uh, what is the biggest health myth that you want to debunk? Um, I want to say that all diets work. Um, people say you can do it anyway. And that's a huge myth because technically you can do it. Let's say like if you're obese, you can do it the, the old fashioned, cut your calories, keep your fat low, keep your carbs high, but it doesn't work because number one, the blood sugar things, that's going to be like hormonal and all those cravings. But number two, psychology, like a lot of people can't, can't regulate themselves with eating a high, high carb diet. So um, maybe it's possible later on in the future, but when people are at a certain level, you can't just be telling them that they're gonna, I, I used to be that guy before I found keto where I was coaching people and I was just like, man, this person just doesn't listen to me. They're not doing what I'm asking of them. It's, it's, it's the plan is perfect, but they're, they're messing up and that's not true and it was an insult. And as one of those people that, that used to believe that, apologies to everybody involved, um, because it's just a myth. All right. So one of the questions I was going to ask, we basically already covered, and that was top five tips on staying fit at home without a gym. So we, we basically already covered that. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition to another question I'm going to come up, up with on the fly. And I'm going to ask you, what is, because I know you're a spiritual person, what is the top three things that you think that help people reach spiritual health? Man, um, top three things to reach spiritual health. Um, I mean, for me, I, I'm going to be very biased because I'm Christian. So um, for me, like I find all of my comfort in the Bible. Um, lately, I've been really, really, I feel like my wife and I both have been, our eyes have been open. So even like some of the churches we used to go to, some of the things we used to listen to, um, you, for spiritual health, you, you need to be challenged. You need to understand that, like, it, you know, for example, one of the things that, that, that that's just been big for us is, like, this whole thing about, and I know it's probably going to be um, controversial, but the whole thing about, like, you're enough, you know, you're, you're, you're good as you are. All those things for me, it, it's just a little bit different for me because I, I'm, if I think that I'm enough and I'm good, then what do I really need to change? You know, I'm totally straight. And so um, I need to be challenged. So if, if you're really trying to improve your spiritual health, regardless of what you do, you need to challenge yourself. And so um, find someone who's going to, for example, a, a pastor who's if you're going to a Christian church, you're going to find someone who's not just out there talking about fluff. You know, you need to be talking about the stuff that's that's important and that challenges us. but in general, um, a routine is going to be so important. Like you need to, you need to start a routine. Like even if it's just a mindfulness routine, like something as simple as doing meditation every morning and then throughout the day, taking some time to just like give yourself a minute and just be like, let me give myself a mindful minute. How have I acted so far? How have I reacted to things? Let me just look back because what you find is like over time, the time between you messing up and you noticing gets smaller. And then hopefully, sometimes it happens for me, very rarely, but hopefully you don't even mess up. You get to that point where you're already like so aware that you're not messing up. Or at the very least, like if I say something to my wife, if I'm like really good and if I'm, I'm in a good place, I'll be able to apologize right after because I'm the one who found the mistake and I got to do that. And that's a pretty powerful thing, man, because you, if you're able to do that, you're able to just be less reactive and you're able to respond to life instead of react to everything, which is like, you know, why that triggered me? Why did it trigger you? You know, you start asking yourself that. And I know that like I, 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 I talked about this on our podcast recently, like sometimes I feel like a hypocrite because it seems like when things get hard is the hardest time to do all those things. You know, like when they're easy, it's super easy to do it. When it gets hard, why all of a sudden do I not want to meditate anymore? Why all of a sudden yeah. do I feel like that's the time when I need to do it the most? So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's, you know, there's, I, this podcast is going to deal with holistic health issues. We're not just going to deal with nutrition and fitness, but we're going to deal with uh, mental health because that was one of my main reasons for getting onto keto. Uh, I had, through sports, through working security, I had a lot of head injuries and I started developing symptoms that are associated with CTE. Oh, man. And Did you get the I irritability had, and all that? And I had like depression, that. irritability. I literally felt like my brain was underwater half the time. Like I, I was a scuba diver and I actually felt like I was underwater. Like it, it was, I would get tired a lot. Um, and being by myself on the truck didn't help. So oh, yeah. I, I, I thought keto was, you know, not going to make me lose weight, but I heard some research coming out about the high fat and brain health. And I wanted to, that's why I did it in the first place. And my mentor, when I was, I, I grew up in the San Diego area and my mentor was Junior Seau. Oh man. Oh. And, and after he passed and they started talking more about CTE and the fact that I did pro wrestling, I got hit in the head a lot in pro wrestling um, I had glass bottles smashed over my head in, in doing security. Some, I had a guy smash a Jägermeister bottle over my head when I was doing security one time. You no, know, I got hit in the head with the club, right? 15 spaces no. over my head. The one that you put no. on the steering wheel. 
Oh, really? Yeah, here in the back of my head, I, I had, I looked like Quasimodo, man. I was like Martin Lawrence in the, remember that old Martin episode where his head was like yeah. that big? That was yeah. Me. Yeah, I, I, I did all that stuff. So we're going to be doing more um, about total health. And I know that's what you're about as well. So I'd love to have you on again, uh, eventually, Absolutely, and especially, especially when we talk about brain health and, yeah. and as it relates to sports, because I do know you work with a lot of athletes as well. Yeah. So I, I know you have some expertise there, and I, I would love to do a show focused around brain health uh, as it relates to athletics and things, potential side effects like CTE from brain injuries and things like that. So... But uh, we're going to go ahead and close out. And before we go, I want people to know where to find you, how to get in contact with you if they want to work with you. So give us all your contact details. Easy. So if they want to listen to the podcast or purchase coaching or a consult, they just go to uh, fatfueled.family, www.fatfueled.family. Um, and then as far as Instagram, dannyvega.ms and uh, feel free to email us too. hello at fatfield.family any questions that you guys got we're actually right when I get off of this I'm interviewing an intern because uh, we're going to bring on some interns to help us thank God man we just got a few things that that like between the DMs I feel terrible like I used to be responding to every DM and then it just got unmanageable man and so this person's going to be putting questions into a document for me so that I can answer them all. And she's going to do it periodically so that I can keep on top of that. Um, but yeah, feel free to send me an email. Hello at fatfuel.family. If you've sent a DM, don't worry, they'll be answered within the next month or so, even if it's like five months old, because <laughs> she's going to compile a bunch of stuff for me. So yeah. Awesome. All right, so this has been the Fatty Joe Show, episode two with Danny Vega, part of the series of early influencers. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now, and I hope everybody go out there and be kind to one another. Thank you for joining us on the Fatty Joe Show. Be sure to leave a comment and subscribe. It helps the show reach more people. To support the show, as well as Carrie Brown and Yogi's work, on the blog, Keto Recipe Development, Master Classes, and to gain access to private Facebook groups and other awards, go to patreon.com slash the Fatty Joe Show or patreon.com slash Carrie Brown. Also, check out our Carrie Brown and Yogi Parker YouTube channel for video versions of the Fatty Joe Show, recipe videos, and more. Join our awesome community on the Facebook group the Keto Kitchen with Carrie Brown and Yogi Parker. And check out our CarrieBrown.com website for recipes, blog posts, discounts, cookbooks, masterclasses, and other great stuff. Thank you so much.